Hello everyone, pretty solid, spectacular day of day trading today. Uh, we got two 30% trades. Worked out really, really well. On a very just bland sort of day, there was a lot of movement, right? We missed the initial drop on the SPY in the morning, but then we caught a few other moves, all right? So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at what the next steps are for the market. We're gonna take a look at the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Russell. We have to take a look at what's going on with the dollar right now and especially the bonds because now those things are starting to move so that movement in my opinion is going to affect the market we also are going to talk about amd earnings and how amd's earnings are potentially going to affect nvidia and other ai related stocks all right so without further ado let's get started with the video all right so clearly right now we can see that amd is up about five percent in the after hours um AMD second quarter results slightly beat Wall Street estimates. Adjusted earnings per share 58%, 58 cents was better than 57 cents expected. And revenue of 5.36 billion topped the estimate of 5.32 billion. And the forecast, the chip makers revenue forecast was also slightly better than anticipated within its sectors, data center and gaming revenues. Both missed estimates while client revenue surpassed expectations. So now basically the question is how is amd's strength here going to affect um nvidia micron um and the other stocks that are basically affecting the ai related stocks so basically amd nvidia these chip makers are the foundation to build ai technology so you need these chips because they process the information much much faster that's why this entire move upwards with all this AI craze, that's why AMD and NVIDIA did so well is because they are the chip makers, right? So um, basically, generally when AMD is doing well, it's a good sign for NVIDIA as well. AMD, I don't think is going to overtake NVIDIA in terms of any, you know, uh, market share or anything like that, but anytime soon, especially, but um we just have to see how nvidia responds heading into tomorrow but amd is definitely up so far in the after hours um apple we should take a look at apple because apple is now also getting involved in the ai uh field and we can see that apple is holding this uptrend line still the level for tomorrow that it needs to remain above uh, above for it to maintain above this trend line is 195.77 so so far we can see that it continues to hold this trend line and continue to move up and move up and move up but now the interesting thing is that yes apple is basically still maintaining its trend line but there's a lot of other moving pieces so we're going to take a look at those moving pieces but just for now it needs to remain above uh, 195.77 to maintain this trend line doesn't look like that um might end up happening tomorrow we'll take a look at microsoft microsoft's not looking that hot it's maintaining below uh resistance comfortably below 340 but the immediate resistance level is uh, around 338 and it's not having any strength above that it's getting wicks and everything so it's not looking too good google gapped up obviously after earnings and now it's holding above um the level of support that it made from the open of that day so basically we need to see if google can hold 130 but regardless all of these ai stocks google microsoft nvidia and amd are all doing pretty decently right so what we need to see is if these stocks can continue to hold support the main thing is if they can continue to hold support then it'll give enough room for the laggers to come and help propel the market up so the laggers are the teslas the other large tech stocks that aren't doing that well and um yeah so that's one aspect of it the other aspect is that apple and amazon have earnings on thursday so we need to see how um <clears throat> the price of apple and amazon can run up into earnings but there's still a lot of speculation in terms of um you know day-to-day -day price action there's still a lot of speculation especially right now 
um like august is known like i i understand i'm going like uh all over the place for this uh video right now but basically august for the s p is known to be the historically one of the most flat months and we're starting it off pretty damn flat all right so currently right we have to there's two things that we need to we need to watch for number one we need to watch for the dollar and the bonds all right we're going to take a look at that after this and then number two we need to see how the tech stocks are going to respond prior to earnings report releasing thursday after hours and then how they respond on friday as well so that's going to be really fun so until then the market can just continue to be choppy and not really do much and we're just going to continue day trading it so um you know like currently right this still looks uh you know this still is holding support and it's still technically bullish right there's still room to go to 460 to 462 but the thing is that it needs to happen very soon all right but you know we could we could go a bit deeper into this but there's not really mu that much to look at on the s p's chart what's more important to look at are the dollar and the bonds so uh basically the dollar we can see that it's starting to really break out and it had a very very good green day today and um as soon as i said i remember as soon as i uh was watching the dollar really really bounce i wanted to short um and then i think i got a phone call or something and I, I had to respond to that and then the market started tumbling so i don't even remember i think we shorted the top and then i wanted to reshort i don't remember exactly but um i think that was yesterday but regardless we day traded absolutely perfectly today but um yeah anyway the dollar is rising and now you know when the dollar rises like this it's important because if there's strength in the dollar then that means that the overall market is weak okay so how much more room is there so basically the macd we've been monitoring how we needed to see the macd indicator the orange slower macd line move up right and clearly it's starting to really curl upwards which is good everything the dollar did exactly what was needed for this macd and for the momentum to start shifting positively and it's doing perfectly um to a point where you see that the faster acting macd line is pointed downwards even as we had a green day on the dollar that is generally very very bullish because that means that there's still basically this should be pointed upwards right the macd should be pointed up but the fact that it's pointed down even when the dollar is up that is extremely bullish for the dollar's price so we can easily see a big explosive move to the upside based off of this macd on the dollar and if that is the case then that is that should start showing a lot more weakness in the overall market uh the other thing that i want to take a look at was the bonds so the bonds are obviously like really important to watch as well and i I explained how the, the bonds, when the bonds show weakness like this, so for example, if the bonds are very strong, then the overall market is also going to be strong. But this happens at extremes, okay? So what I mean by that is if the bonds comfortably break below these lows here and we start to tumble lower, that is going to cause that should cause weakness in the market so right now what we're seeing is the bonds painted a very bearish picture at a level of support right the dollar broke above resistance so these are two pretty bearish things uh for the market and um there's not really this is this is pretty bearish all right uh we're very oversold on the macd it's moving upwards the macd is moving up 
while the bond price is moving down. That is extremely bearish. That is the opposite of what is going on with the dollar. That's extremely bearish because if the price is moving lower, if, if the price is moving lower like this on the bonds, right? This MACD, this blue MACD line should not be pointed upwards. It should be pointed lower, right? The fact that it's starting to curl upwards while the price is falling is very, very bearish. So the first thing that we have to look at are the dollar and the bonds, and that is not looking too good. Okay, so there's that. And now we can just go through uh, the S&P again. We can go through the NASDAQ, the IWM. But this is truly the main thing. We just have to look at how earnings are going to be Thursday. And... Um, how this is going to continue into tomorrow so tomorrow especially when you're day trading especially during the market you need to be monitoring the bonds and the dollar there's you have to be monitoring the bonds and the dollar especially when there's a uh, market indecision when the stock market is showing indecision they key off of the bonds and the dollar sometimes the bonds sometimes um the stock market is all you need to watch but right now definitely you need to see if the bonds can hold this level of support and we need to see if the dollar can continue to rise all right so there's that let's go ahead and take a look at the nasdaq and then the russell all right so this is a daily chart of the nasdaq and this is just very very funny to me so <laughs> we're currently making a bull flag with the flagpole is a red candle it's a gap up that turned red and this is the flagpole <laughs> for this bull flag which is uh crazy uh i don't think i've ever seen this which is pretty hilarious so yeah uh clearly you know this is a bull flag we're holding <laughs> we're holding this level of support at uh 38050 and um you know it's trying to maintain and hold above support and we need to see if it can break above very soon <clears throat> if apple and Amazon and the tech stocks can rally heading into earnings. That is going to help the Nasdaq. But if the dollar, if the dollar and the bonds break lower, then um, the overall market should not be green. And um, the dollar is already rising. The bonds are already showing weakness. Also, the MACD indicator just crossed above. So a bullish crossover is generally means that one to two days after the crossover. <clears throat> we should continue and be neutral to bullish but uh we were actually red today so we need to see if this bullish momentum in the macd this bullish uh <laughs> setup on the nasdaq is going to lead to some more buying pressure but it's just because the dollar and the bonds are showing uh bearishness so uh it's causing the market not to show strength right the iwm you know yesterday had a huge green day today we showed weakness the macd on the iwm is still not crossed up yet which is bullish the iwm is the most bullish um out of the spy the nasdaq and it's clearly doing much better relative it's holding this level of support it can still climb up so tomorrow on the IW, like this setup can easily rip to the upside but um yeah, we're just going to have to see what happens with the dollar. Honestly, there's nothing else to really look at. Like, if if this MACD indicator can cross above, then obviously that's going to be bullish. This this is actually a bullish... Uh, this is bullish price action on the IWM. But, um, yeah, you know, just looking at the SPY one more time. The safest place to really really start aggressively shorting is once again around 464 463 and um yeah also the spy hasn't crossed up yet on the macd also it's setting up for basically the longer it takes to cross above this high the more bearish it's going to be and the more bearish it is the more people will start shorting and if enough people begin to short, that would be a perfect opportunity for them to um, take off the cap of the downward pressure and selling and start to rip it up alongside this bullish momentum. So 
a lot of people are starting to become bearish and it's setting up for an explosive move to the upside but currently <clears throat> we're holding on to um swing puts for september on the spy but in the short term this can easily just rip to the upside easily heading into thursday's earnings and everything it could still rip but um the main thing is the dollar and the bonds if the dollar and the bonds start continuing to show uh weakness then it's going to be pretty easy to day trade we could just lean short but once again <laughs> once again since uh, like the main thing is that it's easy to go short at levels of resistance and it's easier to go long at support when the market for the day and for the larger time frames is bearish instead of going long at support you wait for bounces and then you go short at those bounces so basically it depends on what's going on day to day so um yeah that's that's basically what we're gonna have to do and i hope that makes sense pretty fun day regardless and uh tomorrow's gonna be fun as well all right so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video hope you guys understood and everything like that and yeah have a good one all right love you guys take care have a spectacular day